Hi, I'm Jan Rasmussen, and these are my assistants, Chicklet and Jiggy. I'm author of the national award-winning book, Scared Poopless, The Straight Scoop on Dog Care. Check out my credentials at my website before evaluating my advice. Now it's time for Truth For Dogs. Today, let's talk about dangerous veterinarians. Is your veterinarian hazardous to your dog's health? The answer might surprise you. As cancer becomes epidemic and all of us have or know someone who has a dog with diabetes, severe allergies, skin problems, liver or kidney disease or heart problems, it's time to rethink veterinary care. Let's pull back the curtain and take a look at profit-driven and outdated methods of care. Most of us trust our vets wholeheartedly. Because we see dog care as too compli complicated for mere mortals, we happily abdicate our responsibility as our pet's advocate in favor of our vet's perceived wisdom. Pet food and drug advertisers who make billions from veterinary recommendations spend millions forming and reinforcing our perception that vets always have our dog's best interest at heart. Well, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. How did you find your vet? Chances are you go to the practice closest to your home or one recommended by a friend who told you she really likes her vet. But is that vet competent? Have you checked his or her credentials and experience? Is your vet up to date with the newest techniques and procedures? Might her standard of care have more to do with money than it does to canine welfare? Your vet could be the subject of a series of disciplinary complaints or could even have a past suspension for malpractice. Would you even know? Don't trust your precious pet to someone who might subject you to heartbreak and to a mountain of unnecessary vet bills. Check out your vet now before something really tragic happens. The following vets, in my opinion, and the opinion of a lot of concerned veterinarians unhappy about methods used by colleagues, may be hazardous to your dog's health. Here are some signs of a bad vet. A bad vet, or an uninformed one, pushes highly processed pet foods. Think about it. Would you trust your own health to an MD who advised you to eat nothing but fast food, which he or she just happens to sell? Well, that's what pet food is, you know, fast food. Bad vets also sell toxic medicines without warning about side effects or suggesting safer natural alternatives. Bad vets vaccinate without fully explaining possible adverse reactions. Good vets, on the other hand, disclose the most recent recommendations of veterinary organizations and schools. They offer a blood test called titer testing in lieu of repeat parvovirus and distemper vaccinations for adult dogs. But they don't push, push unnecessary yearly testing either. We'll talk more about this in another video. Bad vets vaccinate adult dogs with multiple vaccines every year. One nationwide practice brags about giving more shots than any other practice, ignoring all science showing health risks associated with unnecessary vaccination. Another chain repeatedly vaccinates adult dogs against coronavirus, a rare mild disease of puppies that's been on the not recommended list of all veterinary organizations for years. Bad vets vaccinate against five or seven diseases at once, ignoring the assault to your dog's immune system. These polyvalent shots are given for the vet's convenience and for yours, despite negative consequences to your dog's health. Bad vets perform mutilating surgeries like cat declawing and dog debarking. If that's your vet, I say bark back and claw your way out of that clinic fast. Really dangerous vets close their clinic at night or during the weekend, leaving critically ill dogs alone or with untrained sitters who may check dogs only occasionally. Unfortunately, this is the norm, not the exception. Bad vets don't tell you when they've been gagged by their boss either. Countless vets have told me they hate giving annual vaccinations or pushing a particular food or drug, but the head of their practice demands it. In general, the bigger the practice, the more likely profits trump caregiving. Bad vets promote fear of disease and parasites. One chain operation scary poster warns California had 2,000 cases of heartworm last year, not mentioning that that's a tiny fraction of the state's 8 to 10 million dogs. Terrible vets don't refer critically ill dogs to specialists, and they discourage second opinions, 
implying you need their permission to go elsewhere. Well, you don't. Serious re procedures require serious experience. Bad vets well wellness programs revolve around yearly vaccinations and preventative drugs. These so-called prevention programs, which are major profit makers, may be shortening your dog's life. Terrible vets vaccinate sick dogs and dogs undergoing surgery or chemotherapy. Talk about being kicked while you're down. Terrible vets also vaccinate dogs without your permission. By the way, don't let them take your dog into the back room without knowing exactly what they'll be doing and why they need to do it out of your sight. Vet techs have told me some real horror stories. So, is your vet a bad vet? If so, do something now. Become an informed consumer. Express your concerns and expect real answers, not mere platitudes. Or maybe you should switch vets. Okay, you're probably wondering how to find a better vet. Well, I'll tell you exactly how. Head on over to www.dogsfordogs.com and subscribe to our new blog. We're posting free articles on veterinarians and countless other subjects, plus important links and more and more videos all the time. This is Jan Rasmussen for Truth For Dogs, encouraging you to advocate for your dog.